Hi everybody, my name is J.M. Mannion. Most of you probably know me as the photographer for the NPC News. We used to have the NPC News Magazine and now for NPC News Online and all of the uh, social media that's associated with that. I have been doing this since 1985. So it's been a very, very long time of uh, doing this, photographing NPC and uh, IFBB professionally contests all those years. So uh, as you might know, and if you aren't really sure, I'll give you a little background on myself. Uh, my father is the president of the National Physique Committee and the IFBB Professional League, Jim Mannion. Uh, he does not take the photos. Even to this day, uh, competitors come up and they thank Mr. Mannion for taking their picture, for putting it on the website, or for years they would do it uh, for the magazine, which was hysterical. He loved it. He played it up. He'd be like, oh, oh thank you very much. And I'd be like, standing right next to him, and it, it would just be like, you know, but uh, a lot of times people would go, oh, you're Jim Mannion's son. So I didn't have a name for a lot of years. And unfortunately, now I've gone from being Jim Mannion's son to, oh, aren't you Tyler's dad? Now, if you don't know, Tyler is my son, Tyler Mannion. He is now the uh, vice president of the NPC, NPC Worldwide IFB Professional League. So I've kind of lost my identity in there all these years, which is pretty, pretty funny, actually. But if you do know me and you've talked to me, conversed with me somehow, seen things that I've done online, other things, you'll also know that I am a huge, huge comic book fan, uh, as evidenced by this hat. I am more of a DC person than a Marvel. Uh, I grew up watching the Batman TV series, the Adam West, Burt Ward series from 1966. Still think that might be the coolest Batmobile ever. Okay, so that's what got me interested in comic books. I didn't realize that Batman was a comic book until uh, much later I realized that they had adapted that television show from a comic book. So I started reading the comic books as a kid and I've continued... Um, even now, I still read comic books. I still actually like to get an actual book in my hand and, and read it. I don't like to read it digitally, but I know that's the way things are going. So through all this, I've always thought to myself, as comic books progressed and you're looking at them, I'm like, these they draw these comic book superheroes, supervillains, everybody. They look like bodybuilding and fitness people. Especially the guys, they have the rippling muscles, they've got abs, they've got everything, whether they're wearing masks or whatever. And I'm always like, hmm, it's the industry that I'm in, that I've been born into, because uh, my father was a competitor for years before he took over running the organizations. And I was always like, this is, this is pretty cool. Uh, I was always an art student. I was actually a, an A-plus art student. Um, one of the things that I'm most proud of that I drew back in 10th grade in my 10th grade art class was what would eventually become the logo for my father's gym, Mannion's Gym in Pittsburgh. And uh, if you've ever seen it, it has a, the outline is actually a Superman logo. And the, the, the person in between, I was trying to make it more like a little bit of a Superman-ish, but more like a Hercules type of look, something like that. But uh, it, was, it was interesting that my dad ended up choosing that. And to this day, if you've seen the retro shirts that we have, uh, it's still on there. So uh, I've always been interested in artsy things. Uh, as far as photography, I took that up in high school. And once I finished high school, uh, I actually never took another class. I kind of learned on my own. There was a lot of people that were in the fitness industry that were... Uh, instrumental in helping me and guiding me and because taking pictures of landscapes or people or other events is way different than photographing the human body and at that point there was really only men's bodybuilding and um, a couple of people that were very instrumental in helping me were uh, Barry Brooks and the late uh, Bill Reynolds who was at that time the editor-in-chief of then Flex magazine uh, the pre the follow-up to Muscle Fitness magazine that was going to be focusing more on the bodybuilding industry. And they really helped me with that as far as photography. But I never lost my interest in comic books and drawing and things like that. But, uh, you know, I would see this stuff for years. Uh, of course, along came the 
Superman movies with Christopher Reeves, who bulked up for that. Then we had the pivotal 1989 Batman with Michael Keaton, Tim Burton directing it, with Jack Nicholson as the Joker, which took the genre to a whole other level in the movies. As I always like to say, the 89 Batman, without that movie, we wouldn't have what we have with the current uh, slate of superhero movies that you see because they took it darker. Instead of the light, bright 60s TV series, and even the Superman movies were bright. Uh, and it also helps that Michael Keaton is from Pittsburgh. I mean, you just can't go wrong there. So that's a little bit of a background on me, my interest in comics, why I like comic books, comic book movies, uh, and things like that. So going to lead into this to a project that I started on my own. Going to all of the contests, uh, there was a lot of supplement company, but a lot of booths at these contests. And I had a friend of mine named Grace Grimes that was working at the Metrics booth. And I went to the booth one time for one of the contests here in Pittsburgh, and I saw that she had her own comic book based on her. And I was like, oh my God, that is like the coolest thing. I'm like, wow, this is, this is really great. And I had had these thoughts about, you know, some way to adapt what I do with the MPC and Ivy Pro League into some type of comics, whether it was drawing or something. I really wasn't sure. And I looked at Grace's book, which I'm pretty sure was called Wicked Angel. And I'm like, this is awesome. And she gave me one of them. And she's like, so I was telling her what my ideas were. And she's like, well, my friend, I have a friend named Ian Asher. He's the one to put this book together. And he wrote it. He got everything drawn and helped her get it printed and she was like I'd be glad to introduce you to so she got the two of us together I talked to Ian I told him what my thoughts were uh, of using the actual people the actual pros and people that are in the fitness industry for a comic book and I said you know actually what I want to do is I did want to include men I ended up including women so I'm going to just take a little sidetrack on that um, we talked about it. I'm like, who doesn't ever want to meet a real superhero? So you would love to meet Batman for real. You'd love to meet Superman. I mean, you could go Wolverine, Spider-Man, Captain America, everybody that was built in the comic books. And same with the women. I mean, Wonder Woman, Catwoman, uh, any of the supervillainous or superheroes that they had. I mean, they were the same way. Uh, talk to Ian about this. I... I approached a few of the current pro bodybuilders at the time, and all of them wanted a ton of money to do it. Considering I was going to be self-financing this, it just didn't work financially. I mean, they thought that this was going to be DC or Marvel Comics, and I'm like, no, this is an independent project, an independent comic book. So we decided to focus just on the females because like I said I've talked to comic book aficionados that how would you love to go somewhere and meet Wonder Woman see a real-life Wonder Woman a real-life Catwoman uh, a real-life Spider-Woman I mean we could go down the list of all the different uh, hero superheroes and super villainesses too and so we decided to use some of the current top IFBB professional athletes at that time there was only figure, pro figure, and pro fitness, at, and, well, and women's bodybuilding. Um, I decided to work with the fitness and figure competitors for this. Uh, I approached quite a few of them and explained my ideas and what I wanted to do and what was going to be involved and things like that. And I had got quite a few that turned me down. And I had a few that said, sure, this would be really fun. I, I would love to be my own superhero. I go, well, here's the thing. Your superhero name is going to be you. You're going to be yourself. You might have a, a name, like everyone knows that Clark Kent is Superman, Bruce Wayne is Batman, but it's going to be based on you, you, your name. And, of course, they wanted to know, you know, as far as payment and stuff, and I said, listen, I'm going to be honest, this is a self-financed project, because I always like to joke, I always say I'm the 
George Lucas of the project. I was overseeing everything and I was financing everything. And I was hoping to get the printing done relatively better than what uh, if you would do an independent publishing because we had the MPC News Magazine and it was a full color magazine. And at this point it was pushing three, 400 pages each issue. And I thought, well, with the amount of publishing that we do through the MPC News Magazine, that these companies here in Pittsburgh could, you know, maybe try to get me some type of a deal doing it. But in speaking to Ian and speaking to the people that did the publishing here in Pittsburgh, they couldn't do the format of a comic book size. And Ian knew several people that could do that. So we talked about it, got some different numbers, and then uh, I realized that I'm going to have to go with somebody else. I can't get it done here in Pittsburgh. But it ended up working out pretty good. And now this, like I said, this is about 2005. At this point, there's really nothing else except for the um, Batman movies and the Superman movies. There's a couple other here and there, but it was nothing of significance. There was no Marvel Cinematic Universe at this point. There was no Dark Knight movies yet, anything that hadn't even started. So that was the basis of putting the comic book together and what I wanted to do with it. The next step was basically casting who the real life competitors were going to be in the comic book. We ended up going with fitness champions Susie Curry, Adela Garcia, and figure champions Gina Aliotti, Sonia Gonzalez, and Jenny Lynn. That's who we started off with and we eventually brought in Crystal Richardson. Now, we had who we were going to be the heroes and the villains. And at this point, I decided to go with those with the dark hair, kind of like the villains. Okay, so now that we had established who was going to be what in the books, Ian set about putting together a script. He and I talked about what we wanted, how we wanted it to be. It was going to be comic booky. It was going to be sci-fi-ish. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to be grounded in total reality. The reality is going to be that uh, it was using the real-life competitors. Now, Jenny Lynn, Susie, and Adela were all the heroes at this point. And on the other side, you had uh, Sonia and Gina, and they actually had their own names because they were the villainesses. And there was also uh, a cameo in there by a couple others, and uh, I'm not going to tell you who, but they are in that book. So Ian said about putting the script together and sending it over to me. I read it. I'm like, oh, this is great. I mean, I loved it. It was, I really enjoyed it. And I'm like, okay, so what is the next step? Well, the next step was finding somebody that could draw the comic book and then do the, the black lines and everything. Come to find out that I didn't have the money to go full color. So what we did was we had a color cover, but then everything on the inside was black and white, which ironically was something that the Walking Dead comics ended up doing, you know, gray tones and things like that. But I figured, listen, it's, it's a brand new project. It's something, hopefully it will catch on and we could eventually go to color. So we set about, Ian got hold of everybody. I talked to them and Ian helped negotiate the prices for what I was paying these artists. And being a photographer myself, I understand about being paid. And these guys were like, they were like, wow, they actually have somebody to base it on. I sent them pictures of the of the competitors of who was in, who were in the book, like their stage pictures that I had taken, so they could actually make them look like them. That was the other thing. It, it wasn't just gonna be like a random person and you're calling it Adela Garcia or Jenny Lynn. No, they we wanted them to look like themselves in the comic book setting. So this is 2005. As I say, I was way ahead of the curve on this. I was way too early on doing this uh, because nobody else had done it. I, I actually was surprised that nobody in our industry had actually done something like this before. I looked all around. I asked everybody if there was ever anybody that did a comic book on any of the competitors, whether it's the men or anything. And everybody's like, nope, 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 no, no. Who would do that? Why would they do that? Whatever. So that was good news because I knew that I was going to be a pioneer in this. So the first thing the artist did was they sent me over sketches 
of what each of the competitors would look like and I was just like blown away that the costumes that they made them I actually had nothing to do with that I let the artist I told them listen this is what you do you make it look the best that you think it looks so those artists are the ones that actually created all of that and uh, they sent them over I said yes yes a couple of them we tweaked a little bit the faces because I was trying to get them as close to them even though it is comic book as possible and they sent them back over now it was taking Ian's story and turning it into comic book form and we had decided on a name which at that time was not Iron Sirens that comes after. So what we have here is Project Diva Trinity. This is the cover. This is what it ended up looking like. This is November of 2005. And I'll tell you what, I couldn't have been prouder of it. I mean, here we are with, these were the character designs. This is what the book looked like. And uh, it was just, it was very exciting. Let me just tell you. And we put it out. I took it to the competitors, I took it to the bodybuilding shows, we were selling them, and there was a new thing that I started hearing about, which was called comic conventions, which everybody shortened to comic cons, and I'm like, oh, this would be really interesting to see about going there. Of course, I heard about the main one that's in San Diego every year, but I came to find out it was really, really expensive. And if you are a new or independent publisher, you're not in a good spot. So people probably wouldn't uh, be interested in having you. So what we did was we put advertisements in the NPC News Magazine and basically word of mouth. And I, like I said, we took them around. I gave these books, I gave several of them to the competitors to let them sell them, let them autograph them and things like that. So this is where we start, right here. Project Diva Trinity. It is a really cool book. Uh, I have a bunch of these still here. Not as many because we were trying to get rid of them. The only thing was, a couple of, <laughs> about a year or so went by and I still had a lot of these. And I was starting to get bummed out about the whole thing and you know, do we move on to another issue because this really hadn't gone anywhere. So I was actually a bit disappointed in that. And that was something that I had to sit down and then contemplate, what can we do? Uh, like I said, it was a bit disappointing, but I was very proud if this is it. If this is what we ended up with, one issue, I was okay with it. It did have a cliffhanger ending, but that's the way it would be. So this is the original book this is where it started but there's something else that follows that was really cool before I give you what happens next I would be remiss if I didn't stop here to give a shout out to the person that was the most supportive and uh, behind me the whole time told me to give it a shot because it was also her money too I want to say a shout out to my wife Debbie who encouraged me to do this see what happened you know success or failure either way and like I said we had a little bit of I don't want to say failure it just didn't go where I wanted but where we go next was actually pretty exciting so I just want to make sure that you know I want everybody to know that she was giving her 1000 percent support to this whole thing yes it was a vanity project something that I wanted to do always wanted to do she could have really easily just said no those of you that have uh, significant others or wives, you know, you don't always agree on things, but she was there 1,000% behind me. So I just want to say thank you to her also for letting me do this and have a lot of fun. So with the book kind of stalled, uh, I asked Ian, what do you think we could do? And he's like, guess what? I've got some really, really good news. I have a gentleman that has a thing called digital webbing that they would like to reprint and publish the book in color. We would also get a new cover too, which I was like, okay, what about the inside? Well, guess what? Because it was already in black and white, all they had to do was colorize it. We had the original artwork that we could send over to them and we rebranded it to be named Iron Sirens. Now, this is two years later 
and where I thought the project was pretty much dead in the water. Next thing you know, we have this. This is issue number one again, but the interesting thing was it was for sale and digital webbing and what they did was there's a company that was called Diamond Distributions, which distributes all the comic books or did at that time. And like anything else, whether you're GNC, you put your product in there or whatever, and they try to sell it and you have to sell X amount of them or they ship them back to you and you pay for it. But anyways, they were like, okay, so we were able to get this not only printed and sold through digital webbing, I was able to do it myself and we also had it to, uh, sent out from Diamond Distributions to different comic book stores that would take it. So ironically, uh, there was a comic book store that was right up the street here that I knew the owner, and he, he actually took like two dozen of them, and he actually sold them all. And I was like, wow, that's great. And uh, so to give you an idea, see, we have like, this was the, it's just like in the black and white, but now you can see everything is colorized. So it made it really cool. And one thing we did was at the end, we decided to include the pictures of the real people that were in the book, just to make it a little bit different. So this is where we start. This is the beginning of it. This is now two years later, 2007. And I was excited. The girls were excited. Everybody was, and it was on its way. Now, I'm gonna just say it didn't sell what, it's, what it was gonna be through Diamond Distribution. A couple months, but actually about six months later, they got hold of us and said they're gonna be shipping them back. But I wasn't deterred. Uh, this going full color m actually made the difference and people were interested. Like I said, we left this on a cliffhanger. So more people, the internet was becoming more popular. It wasn't real, real popular at that point, but it was, it was a start. And again, 2007, the Marvel Cinematic Universe doesn't start until a year later. Think about that. So my idea was, you know what? How about we try one of the Comic Cons? Let's do a small one. They had them in Pittsburgh, they had some Ohio, they had some Erie, I saw these ones. Let's get the, the girls to come here to the things and get them to go to the Comic Con dressed as their character. See, to me, that was always the big pull of the comic book was you can go to this Comic Con and now you can meet the Iron Sirens in person. And we now call the villains Dark Divas, okay? So you could go there, they're in their costume, they could meet you, we would do like everybody else. You wanna get a picture with them you, and an autograph, you have to buy a comic book. So it, it worked, it was fun. Uh, like I said, it was nothing like the San Diego Comic Con, but it kickstarted us uh, and got us going. And we also did it at one of the contests here in Pittsburgh, and everyone was pretty intrigued about it. And the fact that they that these uh, competitors, who they knew as the top competitors in the industry, you know, were in this comic book. So that is the jumping off point. I was really excited, and I'm just gonna stop it right here because there's a lot more to come later. I hope you'll come back. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of the history of getting the Iron Sirens comics started. And there is a lot more to follow. So if you're interested, let us know, keep it going, contact us, tell us if you like it, if you wanna see more or anything else that you have an interest in. So this is J.M. Mannion, I'm signing off for now. And if you want to purchase Iron Sirens Comics, you can actually go to the website that we have, ironsirenscomics.com.